Mortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Prologue. The Woman in the Photograph. There's a photo on my wall of a woman I've never met. It's left corner torn and patched together with tape. She looks straight into the camera and smiles, hands on hips, dress suit neatly pressed, lips painted deep red. It's the late 1940s and she hasn't yet reached the age of 30. Her light brown skin is smooth, her eyes still young and playful, oblivious to the tumor growing inside her, a tumor that would leave her five children motherless and change the future of medicine. Beneath oh, the photo, do you love it? Wow, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. Beneath the photo, a caption says her name is Henrietta Lacks or Helen Lane or Helen Larson's. No one knows who took that picture, but it's appeared hundreds of times in magazines and science textbooks, on blogs and laboratory walls. She's usually identified as Helen Lane, but often she has no name at all. She's simply called Gila, the code name given to the world's first immortal human cells, her cells, cut from her cervix just months before she died. Holy shit. Her real name is Henrietta Lacks. I've spent years staring at that photo, wondering what kind of life she led, what happened to her children, and what she'd think about cells from her cervix living on for forever. Bought, sold, packaged, and shipped by the trillions to laboratories around the world. I've tried to imagine how she'd feel knowing that her cells went up in the first space missions to see what would happen to human cells in zero gravity. Or that they helped with some of the most important advances in medicine, the polio vaccine, chemotherapy, cloning, gene mapping, in vitro fertilization. I'm pretty sure that she, like most of us, would be shocked to hear that there are trillions more of her cells growing in laboratories now than there ever were in her body. There's no way of knowing exactly how many of Henrietta's cells are alive today. One scientist estimates that if you could pile all HeLa cells ever grown onto a scale, this might be your way they'd weigh more than 50 million metric tons. An inconceivable number, given that an individual cell weighs almost nothing. Another scientist calculated that if you could lay all HeLa cells ever grown, end to end, they'd wrap around the Earth at least three times, spanning more than 350 million feet. In her prime, Henrietta herself stood only a bit over five feet tall. I first learned about HeLa cells and the woman behind them in 1988, 37 years after her death, when I was 16 and sitting in a community college biology class. My instructor, Donald Deffler, a gnomish balding man, paced at the front of the lecture hall and flipped on an overhead projector. He pointed to two diagrams that appeared on the wall behind him. They were schematic 